So you are struggling to get through school or university or whatever? I got you. I'm a Ukrainian high school senior and I've always been an A plus grader, so it is in my blood. But no one else in my family was, so I should know something that they and you don't know. And I not only know it, I also do it. So when you hear me say something really familiar and cliché, just ask yourself this question. Have I ever actually tried to do something about my studies that I know I should do? An A letter. I'm sure you haven't heard of this before. So let's say your goal is to get straight A's for the next study year. Imagine that getting A's is guaranteed, but with one requirement. You must write a letter to yourself, to the accountability body, to a professor or whoever you trust. Dated next May or whenever your study period ends, which begins with the words Dear someone, I got my A because. And in this letter you should tell, in as much detail as you can, the story of what will have happened that is in line with the extraordinary grade. In other words, you should prove to yourself why you want this grade. Maybe because you've always wanted to get better at math, or be more confident at class discussion discussions or become more organized and disciplined. Because getting an A for the sake of getting an A is boring and you will inevitably burn out with such goals. So you must really define what makes you want this grade and you should want it badly enough so that you don't have a plan B. If you want to improve your skill of complaining and making excuses, I tell you, you are already proficient in this, as everyone else. Instead, you need to get rid of negative emotions when it comes to your schoolwork. And it is an essential part of being an A grader. I've always been clear on the goal of doing my homework and preparing for exams while my classmates were complaining about this stuff while postponing the actual task. I mean, of course, complaining is not forbidden, but you'd better stop doing it. Because you waste your time without moving the needle. What I suggest you instead is what I call the robot mode. It's really simple. When it comes to doing your schoolwork, turn this mode on and become as emotionless as you can. It doesn't matter how much you hate or love the subject. Be objective here, consider all the facts, and the fact is you have to do this task. You can't avoid it. Though school subjects are not really useful in real life more often than not, I don't think school is useless on the whole. It does offer you some opportunities to improve your skills. But no one ever tells you about this. It's like an extra bonus that not everyone gets, but you must. Yeah, I really figured it out myself, but the point is you need to use your study to your advantage. I am serious. You wanna be more organized and disciplined? Always attend classes and do your homework on time. You wanna manage your time better? Start by time blocking your classes and homework time. You wanna be more confident in public speaking? School curriculum can provide you with that opportunity as well. Just try and just do what's required, or maybe do more than required. I personally found that school is a unique tool that if you use wisely, it can improve every single area of your life and you can simultaneously achieve success in the classroom and beyond. I personally learned to study effectively by using my time and energy right through studying at school. And that's our next point in this video where I will teach you how to do it. Study smarter, not harder heard this phrase, yep. But what is it actually? It is when you own your school curriculum, not when it owns you. When you can't reach your deadlines and study at night, chances are it's entirely your fault. 
I don't urge you to study every single subject with equal attention. In fact, I never do it. I only focus on a few subjects that bring me the greatest return. I am being outstanding at those subjects while at the rest I am being good enough. You see, one teacher puts you an A without any extraordinary effort, while another teacher demands much more effort for the extra points. Find these clues, where you can be just good enough without spending your extra time and attention and energy, and where you need to put in extra work. Find the subjects that need the most of your attention and direct your attention there. I'm talking about the 80-20 principle. 80% 80 of your A's results from only 20% of your efforts. A specific subject, task, time of the year, etc. Do the hardest thing first. Studying effectively also means doing the hardest stuff when you have the most energy. I always thought everyone knows about this principle of doing the hardest assignments first, but surprisingly enough, when I told my sister about this principle, she didn't get it. So I want you to understand that when you start with the easiest stuff, you are highly unlikely to reach the hardest stuff, because you will be drained by the end, and you will spend little attention on that most essential subject. Your energy, willpower and attention are limited resources, and if you scatter them on simple tasks, you will get an empty tank before you even get to the essential, and by the end you are more likely to make excuses. So don't wait. Wait, do the thing now. You already know what you need to get done first. Let it be your priority task, your non-negotiable. I obviously met A graders who are inconsistent and study haphazardly, but they are far from being admired, because they are highly unlikely to repeat the success in the future. Ever wondered why lottery winners return to the miserable life so quickly, while self-made millionaires can gain another million after losing everything? No coincidence, the former have no system. They don't know how to earn nor use money. The latter, though, are skilled and tempered. They don't rely on luck alone, but also on what they can control, their mindset and actions. Okay, what about study? If you continue using the same methods with which you got C or B, you won't get an A. As simple as that. You need to change how you do it, because the quality of your results depends on the quality of your actions. And study system isn't something extraordinary. It may be something you haven't used before, but that's the point. You can omit using a system and get an individual A, but you won't develop enough to get consistent A's. So what I do is write out every single assignment I need to do on my to-do list. I also study a few extra hours per week on exam preparation. If you do the same, you need to set a minimum. For me, it is 3 hours a week. If I can more, great. But I only need to pass through the limit 3 hours. That's my only goal. I don't aim at the extreme, I aim at the consistency. Of course, you need to think about something except your study. Because if you don't, your escape from study will be something like your phone or sweets. You don't want that. In fact, for me, study is the most unattractive thing I can do. But I still do it, of course. I do it not because of my parents or teachers or whoever. I do it for myself. I do it for being good enough not for excellent. In case of excellence, I would be getting A++++. There must be something in your life that you enjoy much more than scrolling your phone. It may be study, it may be sport, art, or blogging, or whatever you enjoy the most. But you really can't be hobbyless because you always have free time. But for some reason, most of us choose to use it or waste it and give it to TikTok, Instagram or YouTube. Don't interrupt or distract yourself. I know it's hard. I used to do it a lot. I would grab my phone and go on social media whenever the homework seemed too tough and boring. I would respond to every message. I did know that this was unproductive, but I thought it only affected my study negatively. Though in reality, as I was scrolling more, my time spent doing homework became bigger and bigger. 
and this didn't let me do activities that I truly enjoyed. Because these distractions and interruptions, although bring you momentary pleasure, wreck every area of your life. The best thing you can do is just get rid of your phone while doing the homework. If you need your phone while doing your homework, make your home and lock screen as unattractive as it can be, with as little clutter as possible. Turn off notifications selectively, for example, turn off notifications only from social media apps. Turn on the don't disturb mode or focus mode. Do whatever that will make your phone only a calculator or only a translator because it has so many functions that you forget why you needed to use it in the first place. For instance, I removed every single addictive social media app on my home screen. Yes, I do use calculator and translator, but in order to use Pinterest or YouTube, for example, I can only search for it, which creates some extra friction that prevents me from being distracted. I wish iPhones also didn't have this app gallery. YouTube and other social media there seem as attractive as on my home screen. Maybe someone has an idea of how to tackle this problem? Last but not least, you need to embrace consistency, not extreme. You will unlikely get all A's tomorrow at all subjects, even if it's just a little improvement. It's already a win. Count on all these small wins. They're the keys to being an A grader, a person who gets A consistently. So study smart, not hard, and see you next time.